Hello and welcome to another video. We will be discussing uh, kind of a case study today, um, just on a problem that I see a lot that happens. And, and this problem basically looks like this from a SQL standpoint and a data engineering standpoint. Typically, you'll be pulling, you know, multiple files or being handed like through SFTP a lot of different files um, from multiple file providers, but they all kind of are similar, or at least have similar data. They might be like, you know, field one might not be equivalent to field one in another file, but they're all kind of equivalent. And then you have to put them all into some sort of raw database. Right, and, and you wanna put, put them all in, but you might have, you know, I'm, I've only got a few up here, but you might have somewhere in the range of, you know, I've had as many as like 40 or 50, and you know, it's not really, conducive to directly design, you know, 40 or 50, that's straight pipelines that go straight into here, right? And then you've got to manage all of these, even though some of these are kind of the same, just slightly different, you know, and, and some slight differences. Like one might have 100 fields, one might have 50, but they kind of have the same information that you really want in them. Well, instead of doing all of this, instead of creating all this, what I usually will do is create some sort of file tracking system um, that basically manages all these files. It's just usually a simple table that tracks all these files. And then another table that will tell me what insert script needs to go to what file. And based off this, it's really easy just to instead, instead of creating a pipeline for each, you just store all this file information in here then in between here, you basically will have some sort of Python script that will then figure out, okay, well, which uh, insert script do I need to use? And then based off that, <clears throat> it just goes straight into the raw database. So what this basically does, instead of having multiple pipelines, you have this one essentially big pipeline that manages everything. And let's kind of just go over what that looks like um, in practicality. So in practicality, what that will look like, oh, I've already started. So let's look at this, this table here for, for where we're gonna start. So basically this table here, if you'll notice, keeps track of all the raw files that we wanna load. Um, so these are the raw files, the raw CMS. So again, this is all kind of fake data provided by cms.gov. Um, and it keeps track of the file type and the provider. So who gave us this file and what type of file is it? And this is the information we need to basically go over to the next table, which if you remember from the quick design I drew up there, this table here basically mocks up or, or lock, uh, look up, acts as a lookup to the insert scripts, the insert statement. Um, so basically you can join here uh, to the raw files table and by joining here, you'll be able to figure out, okay, well, which one of these actually ends up matching over uh, to these ones. And then that way you can just call the insert scripts required uh, that matches over to the raw table. And again, you can imagine uh, there could be, you know, a hundred different raw types of files here, and you could have a hundred different types of insert scripts here. And, you know, this could be happening every day, and no longer do you need one pipeline for each of these. You just have to match over this uh, file here to the insert script here. And I've also added one more little step here, which is version. And I didn't do this here, but I should, that's something else you consider adding here is, you know, if you know what version, keeping, if you keep track of what version you are from a specific provider, that's kind of important information for backwards compatibility, um, which is always kind of a bonus. You know, if you want to keep backwards compatibility and you know which version this file is, you will always know and thus have the ability to um, link back to the specific insert script as time changes, because you'll probably change uh, some slight data, data specific information. Like maybe you'll, they'll reduce columns or add columns or change names, whatever it might be you'll be ready for it based off of this. So let's see, so if you wanna to start to do, put this all together, you can basically uh, just create a quick script first to start and we're gonna to go to Python here shortly um, where you join these two tables together. So why I call this extracts, I don't know, they're more like um, insert statements. So let's we'll join on file type equals e dot file type um, and f dot provider, oh sorry, file provider. And all you really need kind of is uh, just basically file location and in, well, I'm gonna grab the name from this one. So this is kind of all you're gonna need. 
So now you've mapped this over, right? You've mapped this insert or this raw file to the insert script. So now when you end up calling this information, you'll know which insert script to use. So let's look at kind of what that looks like. It's not like just a good example and it's, it's not that fancy, but here it is. Um, so what I've kind of done is set up a quick script to basically uh, select and join these tables and, and insert the data. You'd probably end up having a wrapper class around this all, but I wanted to kind of just show a simple use case. Um, so just to kind of give it starting, I generally create a log of some kind. Uh, this was just gonna track whatever kind of occurs, whatever, um, specifically this database manager class that we have um, kind of does during the during each step. Uh, just to kind of give an example of what this looks like, this database manager class uh, is basically just for connections um, and then selecting and inserting. You could also add something for executing stored procedures, but this is what I have for now. So we're gonna be using this method for the insert in particular. So we go back here, right? We've got this log creation. So this basically creates a log file right here. Um, well, actually just creates a log name. And then right here, we create a log because of when the database manager is initiated, it automatically creates a log file essentially. Uh, just because it's tracking everything that happens in this database manager. From there, we're gonna get this file list. So this file list is basically gonna, basically gonna be what we saw earlier. Uh, we're really only using the file location and the extract file. If you wanna be cleaner, we can remove these things here on the sides. And so with that file list, we're gonna kind of loop through it right here. And we're gonna loop through it, each file individually. So this, for those who don't know, this is basically a loop. We're gonna go through each file in the list provided from this table. So if you remember, there's three. Um, and then you're gonna read them because this is a CSV. So this first file zero is basically pointing to this file location. So we're gonna open that up as F and then we're gonna read it. Um, we're gonna skip to the next column because since this first column is gonna be a header and then we're also going to get the query. So this is the next thing, which is we're getting the query right here. So the extract file location. We're gonna get the query, which is in the array position four. We're gonna um, read it right here. So we'll get the actual data from it, or the, when I say data, I mean text. And now we have the, the, the raw query that's in that insert script that we had in this other table, if you remember. So right, right here, we get this raw query. We know where the CSV data is. And now let's go back. So now we're going to end up passing that through and running each row, row by row, and inserting it. And I'm pointing out row by row because you could obviously use bulk insert, uh, we're just using uh, uh, row by row for now, uh, purely just for error tracking. This is this is easier to track error when it's row by row. Um, and so yeah, so let's let's just run this. And again, we have basically this insert class that's going to kind of insert for us. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it at this point. We're just kind of showing how you can use the SQL statement to kind of run through everything. So if we take this and we go and run it um, the way you typically run a script, which is Python, if you're running Python, and the script name. It's not gonna output anything at this moment, but it will log everything, so I'm gonna show you the log. So basically, let's go to this log, which was run right now, 2.41, or 2.42 p.m., 41. Um, and so as you can see, this log, which probably needs a space right here, uh, when the database manager is initiated, gets set up, and then after that, um, everything else is kind of it saying, okay, I ran this, store or basically this function. Um, it just gives info. You could probably provide more information here like it successfully ran, maybe some more information on it. Uh, I specifically do this for error tracking. Uh, you might not even want info in here. You might only want errors, which we did have one error because I specifically have one field that's too big and then it exits and that's the end of the log. And then from there, you can kind of go to the tables and see that, okay, all my tables, which is these three right here, or load, and this is gonna be the third time I believe I've run this, so you'll see three. Um, but yeah, so this is basically how it was loaded, and it's loaded all three, basically just by, again, going through and mapping these two files to each other. And so that's, that's it for the video today. Hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon if you have any questions. Bye.